Hi, I'm Kate with ConnectPoint Moms, and I want to help you create and build stronger relational connections with the children in your life. This video is the fourth in the Parenting Differently series, so if you've just jumped in with us now, please stay, but find the link below to the previous video so you can have a full picture. In this video, we're going to talk about saying what you mean and meaning what you say. As I mentioned in my other videos, a lot of this information comes from my studies with Dr. Becky Bailey. She's the creator of Conscious Discipline. Dr. Becky Bailey calls this skill, the one we're talking about today, assertiveness. And here's what she says. Assertively setting boundaries is a critical life skill. If you cannot say no to ice cream, alcohol, or that inner voice that says you're not good enough, you will not be able to say no to your children. When we do not provide these limits, we unconsciously train our children to become victims or bullies. At Connect Point Moms, we always say it starts with you. So you have to own your own stuff and recognize if you're able to say no to yourself before you can try to teach your children the same. Children need to experience firm consistent limits so that they can develop these skills within themselves. I know sometimes it's hard to say no to our kids, but if we don't teach them that, then they're not going to learn. We need to set limits with our children so they can set limits for themselves and others. In this training, we're going to make sure that we're being aware of where we place our focus we want to consciously look for the behavior we want to see rather than what we don't want to see. Here's an example. Imagine you see a child push another child. Typically, we go to the child who pushed and we say, what is the matter with you? Why did you push him? Don't you know that we don't push? That's hurtful. Meanwhile, the child that was hurting, the child that got pushed is over here all but forgotten about. Let's learn to do it differently. If we focus on the hurting, we're just going to get more of that. So let's focus on the one who was hurt so we can show that we value healing over hurting. This is just like Jesus. Jesus didn't waste any time wondering why someone was suffering from this or that, right? Re remember, uh, at the beginning of John chapter 9, we read about the disciples who were looking at a man who was blind from birth, and they asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, since he was born blind? Jesus said neither of them. It was so the, the works of God can be shown in him, and then he healed him. When faced with suffering or uh, affliction, Jesus just swung into action and he healed the sick. He consoled the afflicted. He comforted the brokenhearted. He forgave sinners. He liberated those in the power of the devil. And he welcomed the oppressed and the rejected. And he did this all before he conquered sin, Satan, and death on the cross. In this same way, we need to focus on the healing first and address the offender next. Think of it this way. Imagine you're out to dinner with your very best friend and you're laughing and having such a great time. Oh, you just love spending time with this person. And you walk out of the restaurant and some crazy fool runs up with a knife and stabs your best friend and then runs away. Are you going to chase that crazy fool with a knife or are you going to stay and administer first aid to your very best friend? Hopefully, you recognize that you will provide care for your best friend first, praying for healing, and for someone to catch that crazy fool with a knife, of course. But this is what we mean when we say victim first, so we can focus on healing rather than hurting. Now, what you offer to others, you experience in yourself. So if you focus on what you don't want, what went wrong, what's not right, you're going to feel inadequate. But if you focus on what did happen right, what the kids were able to do, then you have a greater chance of seeing more of that. It's like this with forgiveness. Christ followers are commanded to forgive, but it's not just so we can go, oh, everything's wonderful, la la la, I forgive you for hurting me. No, it's because God, our creator, knows that if we harbor bitterness and unforgiveness in our heart, it's gonna tear us apart. So notice, where you are placing your focus. 
How many of us have tried to change our own behavior? I know I have. I've gone through, I'm not going to eat any more sugar. I'm not going to eat any processed foods. But what I've learned is that your brain has a difficult time processing the words, I'm not going to have any more of. It just hears sugar, chocolate, cake, cupcakes. So when you tell yourself, I'm not going to eat any more of, what I'm really focused on is eating that exact thing. So we need to flip it and tell yourself what you're going to do. I'm going to eat more fruits and vegetables. I'm going to uh, drink more water and eat more salads. So I have a, a better chance, a more likely chance of doing just that. It's the same way with children. If we tell them no hitting, no punching, no spitting, no, no kicking, that's the visual that they have, right? So it's, it's, they're walking around thinking, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this, but that's what they want to do. So instead, we'll say, keep your hands to yourself, or use gentle touches, or say, please move, right? So we'll tell them what to do. Remember that images guide children's behavior. In, in early childhood, that's all that they can do. They just see the picture and that's what guides their behavior. So we need to do two things to help them be successful. Number one is telling them what to do rather than what not to do clearly and simply. Maria, take your plate to the table with your thumbs on top. John, go to the door with your hands by your sides. Ava, Walk beside me with your hand in mine, just like this. So we're telling them what to do. We're not saying, you know, don't hold your plate with one hand. We're not saying, uh, stop running to the door or keep, stop putting your hands all over the walls when you go to the door. We're saying, keep your hands by your side as you go to the door. So that's number one, telling them what to do clearly and simply. And number two is say it in a tone of just do it. It's very matter of fact. So we're going to talk about this in more detail. Often women, and men too, but we tend to use a lot of words and speak very passively because we're trying to be kind and we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And that's called the passive tone. So when we say things like, will you pick up your toys? Can you brush your teeth now? Get your shoes and go to the car, okay? Well, when you say that to children, it gives them a choice. So it's very confusing. Some kids don't know what to do. I, I, is she asking me? Do I have a choice in this? Um, some kids, when you're passive, it makes them be more aggressive. And they're like, nope, I am not going to do it. Right? Or, or some kids just want to please you, which you might think is a good thing. But... If they're trying to please you, that might bleed over to trying to please their friends. So we don't want to use the passive tone. Maybe you use the aggressive tone. Get in the car now. Pick up those toys now. That could be scary. That could be frightening. And um, although sometimes it is necessary, we definitely don't want to rely on that uh, because the children are just gonna tune you out from that. And then whenever you do need to raise up your voice for an emergency, they, they might miss it. So what we wanna do instead, rather than passive or aggressive, is be assertive. Put on your shoes and get in the car, just like this, click. But it's more than a tone, it's a belief in ourselves and a sense that we deserve to be heard. Think of it this way. In all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus calls his disciples by saying, follow me. Now, can you imagine Jesus saying that passively? Follow me? Follow me, okay? Can you follow me now? Probably not. How about aggressively? Follow me now. No, we, I mean, we know that when people turned away from him, it, he felt sad, but he let them go. Jesus was assertive. He simply said, follow me. Because he believed what he would say is what they would do. And that's what we need to do. We need to believe when I tell them to pick up their toys and put them away, they're going to do it. If they don't do it, I'm going to help them do it. But it comes from this belief that's going to help you have that tone, that uh, assertive tone. Also, 
you can just think of something concrete like, I have brown hair. This wall is blue. Pick up your toys and put them in the bin. So I'm just saying something that is a fact. This is a fact. I am a woman. This is a fact. This is blue. It's a fact. Pick up your toys and put them in the bin rather than worrying, are they going to listen to me or not? It's important because assertiveness is not just how you set limits on other people's behavior. It's how you teach people how to treat you. Until we find our own assertive voice, we're not going to be able to teach others how to treat us with respect. Speaking assertively is how you teach respect for yourself and for others. So that's why with parenting differently, we start with giving from what you have. Conscious discipline calls it composure. But until we access our brain's higher centers, it's very difficult to focus on what we want children to do. It's, it's very difficult to speak assertively and tell them what we want them to do unless we stop, breathe, and pray. God help me see this child like you do. God, give me your words, not mine. Or even, help me remember, vengeance is yours. <laughs> Assertive commands involve all of our senses, and I have an acronym called STAPLE. STAPLE as this is, this is the important thing. This is the needed thing. S is for seeing or showing. See, let the children see and show them what to do. Ava, hold my hand just like this. Create a visual picture. T is for touch. Sometimes a simple touch on the shoulder is, is all they need to get started. A is auditory. Are you screaming across the room? Wendy, pick up the toys, pick up the toys, pick up the toys. Or are you firmly and assertively saying, Wendy, go pick up the toys and put them in the bin. P is presence. Your mind is in this moment where your body is right now. You're not thinking, okay, we gotta pick up the toys and then I gotta make dinner and then I gotta... Yes, all those things have to happen. But in this moment, I promise, if you just focus on what's happening right now, those other things will get done as well. L is love, but not as a feeling. Like we've said before, love is a choice to bring your best to this moment right now. So it goes right along with presence. And then E is energy. Assess your energy level. Are you feeling nervous? Are you feeling exhausted? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling peaceful? If we can use all of these staples rather than being worried about what we have to do next or if your child's going to follow your directions or not, we can breathe and be present with this child in this moment and give a command with the voice of certainty. Remember to demonstrate with actions and words and encourage them. There you go. Just like that. You got it. Way to go. You see, as soon as we tell them what to do and they don't do it, we start to feel powerless and we move to the lower centers of our brain. That's where we start to use discipline that relies on fear. Stop. Breathe. Pray. Use the words, I'm going to, rather than, don't you make me. The problem is we're often so busy that we're not slowing down enough to do this. But if we don't slow down and practice being present in the moment that is, we are going to create disrespectful children. You can help them by saying, I'm going to show you what to do, or I'm going to show you how to get started. Or if they're older, you can even ask, what would help you get started? What would help you get it done? You can even give choices. What would help you get focused on your schoolwork, music on or music off? Once we learn how to be assertive with children, it's time to teach them how to be assertive with each other. The best way to do this is to start with tattling. Now there's two kinds of tattling. Tattling when they've said someone's done something to me and tattling when someone's not doing something that they were told to do. So if you start with when they come up and say, he pushed me, she's bothering me, he, he's looking at me, here's what you say. Did you like it? 
I know that sounds like a strange question, but what we want to hear is their no, or even if they know that they don't like it. So if they answer aggressively, no, then you can say, wow, you really didn't like that. It seems like you feel angry. Breathe with me. There you go. Now go tell Joe, I don't like it when you push me. Keep your hands off. Have them repeat it. Because if they go, stop pushing me, you practice again, match your voice to mine. I don't like it when you push me. Keep your hands off. So have them practice. Now, if they sound passive, you say, do you like it? And they go, oh, yes, no, mm -hmm. Then you can say, it doesn't seem like you liked it, but maybe you don't know how to handle it. I can help. And then you say the same thing, breathe with me. There you go. Now go tell Joe, I don't like it when you push me, keep your hands off. And you have them repeat it, match your voice to mine. Now if children are really passive, you might need to go with them to help, you know, give them the extra strength. But if they are tattling about something someone else is doing, not directly to them, like she's not cleaning up, he didn't put his socks away, she's still on the iPad, then you're going to ask, are you telling me to be helpful or hurtful? Again, we're asking to make an assessment. Maybe this child thinks this is helpful, or maybe this is a great opportunity for you to address the sin of them rejoicing in someone's failure. We can encourage them with Hebrews 10.24, spur others on towards good work and good deeds and, and towards love. But either way, whether they say, I'm, telling, I'm trying to be helpful or I'm trying to be hurtful, your answer is pretty much the same version of this. To be helpful, let's go to Sue and say, it's time to clean up. Or let's be helpful and go to Sue and say, it's time to clean up. At Connect Point Moms, if you want to learn to do it differently, you're going to have to start with owning your own stuff. If you don't own your stuff, it's going to end up owning you. You are going to need to assess your own inner voice and your tendency to being aggressive or assertive before you can help your children set these important boundaries and limits. We teach people how to treat us. Don't we want to teach our children to not only love and respect others, but to love and respect themselves enough to voice their feelings, voice their right to not be pushed? So if you have any questions or comments or feedback, or if you would like individual parent coaching, I can be reached through the website, connectpointmoms.com, or just email me directly at connectpointmoms at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing your feedback and I hope you have a wonderful day.